Hello, this is Marcus from Profile Tree, and in this video, I'll be showing you some of the settings of your WordPress site. Simply go to Settings in the left toolbar within the WordPress admin. First, we'll look at General. Then here, we can change our site title and tagline, similar to what we can do within Appearance and Customize. We can change our admin address here. Any general, general notifications about the site in total will be sent to this address, such as any issues. But for any more uh, nuanced plugins, or even for WooCommerce, there'll be specific order notifications set up to specific emails. So this is more overarching for any problems with WordPress. Here we can enable or disable membership for the site. We can choose the default user role for anyone who adds himself to the site. This may be customer for the likes of WooCommerce sites, or there may be a more custom user role that we have set up during development. Here we can change site language. Here we can change the time zone of our site. And then we can change some things about the date and time format. And though these may affect other plugins that we have operating on the site, it may not affect all of them. There is also an option to display a custom format. More information on that can be found here. And lastly, then we can choose the day that the week starts on. Typically, we tend to choose either Sunday or Monday, depending on what's more suitable to your business. Next, we'll hover back over to the tab on the left and click on writing. Here, we can change our default post category. When one isn't set, perhaps by mistake or, or parallax error. By default, it will be set to uncategorized, but if you've made another one in the meantime, something more general, such as blog or news, it can be applied here so that it's always given to a post, even when a category hasn't been specifically chosen for it. Post format can stay as standard unless otherwise instructed, although this typically isn't used to the change the display of any posts on the site. There's also an option here to be able to make posts to the site via email, although this isn't commonly used. To do this, a mail server is needed, and then a login name and password. This will be something discussed during development if it is necessary, although most people tend to just post directly for the WordPress admin instead. As instructed here, if given any of these details, do you keep them secure so that no one else can abuse or make use of this feature? Next, we'll have a look at reading. Yet again, we can see some options that can also be found within Appearance and Customize here. Using our home page, our post page, and what we use as the main page for our site, be it our blog page, or having it set to a static page like so. Here we can change the amount of blog pages to show it most, how many items within each page, And within our post feed, whether we give the full text or summary, as mentioned here, the theme may determine how this is displayed, though it may not be applicable, but you'll be instructed if so. Lastly, we see the search engine visibility. We only typically have this Discord search engines from indexing the sites enabled whenever a website is still in a developmental stage. 
typically when pushed live, we have this closed and then the site will be visible to any search engines. But if for any reason you want to stop indexing your site for search engines, it can be done here, although it's not recommended unless absolutely necessary. Next, we'll have a look at discussion. There are quite a few settings within here, some of which may be applicable. These can be discussed during development if they're applicable or not, particularly as they pertain to comments being made on the site. But we will typically set these and instruct if there's any that you may want to change. Some details include required content from anyone making comments, if they have to be logged in or registered to comment, if the site is applicable to that. If we want to close comments that are older than a certain amount of days, we'll want to keep the cookies opt-in box enabled. Here we have nested comments, similar to replies that we see in social media. We don't want to keep this too large just to stop the page from getting bulky, so it's fine at its default. And here we can break comments into pages. This would be for particularly comment-heavy sites. This may be applicable. So we can say, after so many comments, to break into a new page. And then here, we can change the order that the comments display, with either the older comments at the top or the newer ones at the top. There are some notification and admin settings that we can set here. So an email can be sent to the admin whenever a comment is posted or when it is held for moderation. Here we can choose if a comment must be manually approved before it displays on the site. This is typically good practice just in case any spam or malicious comments are made. The other option is that the comment has been previously or the comment offer has been previously approved before. Here we can add some conditions for comments that are held within moderation. Links, names, URLs, or IP addresses, any other information pertaining to the commenter. So in particular, if there's any malicious comments coming in from a repeat user or with repeat content, said content or information about the user can be put here. That way, the comment will always be held within moderation, if not already enabled, although it's typically best practice to keep it enabled all the time for manual approval. Likewise here, we have a harsher filter that will immediately disallow any comments and not hold them for moderation and simply throw them in the trash. Yet again, any terms or information about the comment or commenter can be put here. Lastly, within this page, we have our avatars, which may or may not be displayed on your site by default, depending on the design. Avatars can be enabled or disabled using a simple checkbox. A rating can be set in general. And a display avatar. Next, we will have a look at media. We will in general not want to make any amends to any of the image sizes defined above as they'll be connected to the theme. The best not to make changes here unless instructed to do so. The only applicable option really here is where we want our uploads to be organized into month and year based folders, which we'll want to keep enabled since it helps organize all of our media. Next, We'll have a look at permalinks. 
Here, we can see some of the link structure that is used throughout our site. By default, we'll see WordPress simply use page IDs, so number-based solutions, to display pages for us. Although typically, we'll go to what we call post name and display it in a more uh, expected manner. Depending on your site, we may have a custom structure in place using some of the tags below, or even just simple typed in text. The tags can be added like so, and removed like so. So if a new one is to be added, simply click out in the exact order that you want them to display. Likewise, we have our category bases here. So here we can see displayed, one for categories and tags. These are for general posts. And we can change what comes before them. So as shown in the example, I set to topics instead. We would see a URL similar to this instead of slash category. Likewise for the tags. And you can see that there are some or product categories and product tags already in place. These have to be URL friendly, so lowercase with nothing but hyphens, numbers, and lowercase letters. No special characters, since they're to go into a URL. Typically, we will have these set in development, but should any quick amends be made, they can be done so here. Lastly, we can see our products permalinks. By default, it will just use product. There may be different layouts that might be preferable. We'll typically have these in, bit in place using the custom base if needed. Once any amends are made, simply click on save changes. Now, we will have a look at privacy. There are some instructions here for creating a privacy policy. You can also set the page here by default. This will typically be done in development, but it's worth noting where this can be amended. There's a general guide here for reference if ever needed, as well as some general info by WordPress. We also see WooCommerce and any other products that may gather data will as appropriately have policies listed here just for reference. And clicking on create, it will add the default guided template in and any further amends can be made if applicable. If one is already made, you can simply use the drop down here, find the page, and have it set. And that concludes this video. Thank you.